Hi, for those of you new here, this is Evolution Simulation Game The Sapling, my solo indie game project. It's a game where you can basically do two types of things. On the one hand, there are a number of scenarios tasking you to design an ecosystem that meets specific requirements. On the other, there's a sandbox where you can build your own plants and animals, turn on random mutations and see how they evolve. In this series, consisting of six videos, I showcase the development and content for the third big update for the game. Earlier this year, a Steam user asked me, have you considered adding aquatic life? In fact, I had considered that. In fact, I had seen that question before. In fact, I had seen that question before multiple times. Multiple times per day, actually. Multiple times per day for months and months and months. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> to be totally honest, I never intended to add an underwater part to this game. I thought land animals were complicated enough and underwater would be so different that it would take too much time. Also, there already is a really cool underwater evolution game called Ecosystem by Tom Johnson. It was only when I got the same question multiple times a day for months on end that I started to cautiously explore what would be needed to make underwater content a reality. The first step, obviously, is for the player to be able to look underwater. This has always been possible, but so far this has been rather underwhelming. I started with the water surface when looking up. For this I thought I could simply use the basic Unity water shader, until I discovered that this only works when looking from above. Fortunately, it turned out this could be fixed by adding a single minus character to the water shader. This new upside down water material is then added to a 4 vertex plane that is only visible from below. My next step to make things more underwater like, was making sure you can't look that far into the distance. For this I'm using another standard Unity feature, Fog. In older games, fog like this is quite often used as an optimization technique, because it hides things in the distance so the GPU does not have to spend time on them, but in this case I'm mostly interested in the visual effect. The fact that underwater scenes will be less taxing on the player's hardware is just a nice extra. Because I chose to make the fog blue, the whole underwater scene already gets a really blue feel to it, but this no longer works when there are a lot of things really close to the camera. To make the bluish colors more consistent wherever you look, I'm also adding subtle blue color grading. Color grading on land was already a thing since release to showcase the time of day, so all I had to do there was to extend that system a little bit and wire it to the camera position. When the camera is above the water, use the old color grading system, when the camera is below the water, make it blue. Besides color, I'm also trying to convey the player is underwater with bubbles and sun rays. For the bubbles, I actually used the standard Unity particle system with three simple changes, being the amount of particles, the places where they can spawn, and obviously, the particle itself. Because having particle systems everywhere underwater would use too much computing power, I actually use only one, which is spawned at the camera position once the player camera goes underwater. Once the camera starts moving underwater, and the distance becomes too large, it simply stops creating bubbles, jumps to the camera position, and starts creating bubbles again. The sun rays took me nearly a week of iterating ideas to get it the way I wanted, but in the end I'm using a technique from underwater game Absu, which is brilliant in its simplicity. I use a flat billboard displaying a dot with soft edges, and stretch it all the way down. Then I make sure this billboard always faces the camera, and is animated to stretch and compress a little. Finally, like the bubble particle system, each sun ray checks how far away it is from the camera. If it is too far away, it will turn itself off, jump to a random position closer to the camera, and slowly fade in again. The final thing I do for an underwater feel is put all music through a low pass filter. So far this effect was used for pass mode, where I'm now using a high pass filter instead. I'm a bit sad about this, because in my opinion a low pass filter works much better to convey being passed, but underwater mode needs it more. On top of the low pass effect, I've added this looping ambient underwater sound. Ok, so a lot of talk on how we can go underwater, let's now focus on underwater life. A lot of people have suggested that I add aquatic plants, and aquatic plants indeed exist. Think of water lobelia, pipeworts, seagrass, lotus plants and water lilies. If I'm not mistaken however, these all evolved from land plants back into the water, and are not the aquatic organisms that originally filled the niche that plants fill on land. I think when people ask me to add aquatic plants, they are really thinking about algae. Algae are similar to plants in a number of ways, but also fundamentally different. 
For the purpose of the game, the most important difference is that algae don't have roots to obtain water and nutrients. Some algae do have something similar, called holdfasts, but they only use that to stay in one place, nothing more. This simplifies things, making algae the perfect starter organisms to teach new players how the game works. Plants, the original starter organisms, are getting more and more complex with each new update, so in this sense a new organism type is very welcome. And the fact that in natural history algae came before plants fits nicely with that. So algae should be, and will be, simple. So simple, in fact, that I can explain them in a few sentences right now. There are two things that decide where algae can grow. How rocky or soft the ground is, and how deep or shallow the water is. This holdfast can grow on really rocky soil, this one in really loose sand, and this one somewhere in between. If you make the alga really short, it only works in shallow water. If you make it really long, it gets a stem-like thing, which is called a stipe, and it only works in deep water. The longest form even has a gas bladder to make sure it stays upright, which I thought was a nice little detail. There are two other things you can manipulate, namely the color of the algae and the width of the blades. The color works exactly like it does for plants, except that it's not necessarily the same light colors that reach the soil underwater. You don't have to worry about light and stability, and just like in real life there will be less red light. In practice this means that there often will be different and more alga colors than plant colors. The blade width, finally, is a simple trade-off. Wider blades means more sunlight so more offspring, thinner blades means the algae can also live in places with a strong current. As you can see, adding a whole new organism type also meant adding a whole new editor, the second one this update. There was a lot of stuff I could reuse like cone-shaped handles, the gradient color backgrounds and the bubble particles. What I did not reuse, however, was the music, because I wanted to see if I could create a more underwater atmosphere. I started by mixing layers of ambient sound, like this one, and this one. This layer in particular is interesting, because in isolation you can clearly hear it's some sort of futuristic synthesizer sound, but when mixed with the others, it suddenly sounds like bubbles. Just like with the other editors, I wanted to add fragments of melody, but it took me a long time to find an appropriate instrument. In the end I went with the steel drums, which I associate with a tropical beach, and this a little bit with water. Not sure if you guys have that same association, but even if not, the steel drum has that dreamy sound I was going for anyway. One thing I had to worry about when adding algae was the animation, because unlike plants, algae that don't move look weirdly frozen in time. Algae are of course extremely soft and flexible, which was a bit of a problem for me, because all of my animations look super stiff. This forced me to study the famous animation principle called follow through and overlapping action. Let me just show you what I mean with that. Say this is the alga I designed, and I want to animate it, moving underwater from left to right. The simplest way to achieve that is like so. As you can see, it indeed moves from left to right, but it looks like it is made out of one solid piece. The idea behind the animation principle follow through and overlapping action, as invented by the Disney animators in the 1930s, was to give loose hanging parts a similar animation but delayed. So if I apply that to the second segment, I get this. And then yet another delay for the third segment. The more extreme I make this delay, the more it looks like something underwater. A problem I now have, of course, is that moving things are quite expensive for the player's hardware. When the players look at a place with hundreds of LG, I can't afford to animate all of them. My solution for now is to only use this detailed animation for things up close. For LG further away in the distance, I simply alternate between two models. The final big hurdle for LG was how to incorporate all of this into the starter scenarios. For those of you that bought and played the game already, you know that until now, the game started with the island level, where the player was introduced to plants. LG are too simple for a separate extra scenario, meaning that I have to squeeze LG into the first scenario as well. This in turn means that I have to let go of the island level. I feel slightly nostalgic about this, because the island model is the first scenario I designed, and there was a time where this was both the first scenario but also served as the sandbox terrain. But from the next update onwards, it won't be in the game at all anymore. For a replacement, I needed a level where part is underwater and part is above water. This is what I made of it in Blender, along with many other things that I have to specify for a scenario to work, like the camera positions, the initial camera focus point, 
the height of the surface and the positions of the clouds. It is very similar to the old starter scenario, except that it starts out with the task to make an alga, and then a shorter one that can live in shallow water, very gradually introducing the player to all the complexity the game has to offer. While I miss the old starter level, I think all in all it makes for a more exciting first experience and playtesters respond well to it. So I hope that's how you'll feel about this scenario as well when you try it on September 13. Or when you are impatient and don't mind your game crashing every 5 minutes, when you try the experimental builds that will be available from August 16 onwards.